since it is still Stellar Crown release weekend, we are going to be talking about Stellar Crown some more. We're going to see, is it doing good or is it doing bad or is it just kind of in the middle? Well, first off, we're going to take a look at booster box prices, which albeit you have to take some of this with a grain of salt because we are obviously just a few days into the actual release. But what we did see right here is the booster boxes did shoot up a little bit to almost $110. So that is interesting. And we've seen a lot of uh, booster boxes start to get sold, especially right here at this dip when it dipped back down to 105. So that's very interesting. Also something that I do find interesting, if you guys see the listed median price, so the average price, 127. So if that is if that holds true, which we don't know because a lot of people might list on here and they'll undercut the market kind of thing. But if that holds true, we could see this box continue to rise, like right here. So um, the last sales, you know, they're all at like 108, 109. So that is interesting. We also have some updated pull rate information. We kind of took a smaller sample size when we looked at it not too long ago, but TCG player helped us out. They did 8,000 Stellar Crown packs. So you have a 1 in 137 to pull a Hyper Rare, 1 in 411 to pull a specific Hyper Rare for the SIRs. It's going to be 1 in 90 packs to pull an SIR. Uh, because it's a smaller set, 1 in 540 to pull a specific SIR. The IRs are 1 in 13 packs with 1 in uh, 167, excuse me, for specific IR. The ultra rares are one in 15 with one in 163 for specific ultra rare and the ace spec is one in 20 and one in 60 for specific and we pulled two ace spec from our one booster box that we opened our first booster box we did pretty good overall we pulled a hyper rare we got the bulbasaur we pulled a few um irs and we pulled the briar sir and two ace specs and yeah, so it was kind of a loaded box, just not loaded in the way we wanted it to be. For the way I wanted it to be, I should say. But yeah, so these are the pull rates for Stellar Crown, smaller set. So this will be interesting to see how this affects the cards. Now, something else I found interesting, which is kind of crazy Pokemon Center um, Elite Trainer boxes. Obviously, this price is coming down, but some people were buying these already at $100. And that's wild because they're like 60. But uh, anyways, this is just something interesting. This doesn't really mean anything. Because once again, people who are buying from TCG Player at these high prices, it's more of an anomaly. But um, all right, now we'll take a look at some of the singles. So something that sometimes it takes for me, and I don't know about for you guys. Let me know in the comments if you agree with this. Sometimes it takes me, I got to see a set multiple times for me to kind of get my vibe of it is it good how good is it kind of thing right and especially after opening so i start to look at this I got the tropagos the lacy the hydrapple the squirtle galvantula bulbasaur briar gold tropagos the dash bun right um we got the zorora over here which is a nice ir the joltic ir is nice rebu uh, the Ledian, super cheap. Um, yeah, you know, you start to look at it and you go, I, personally, I go, I, I kind of like this set. I, I do. Now, what we are seeing happen with the singles, we are going to take a look at some of these. Um, I got these pulled up right here, like the Bulbasaur here. Now, what we are seeing is pretty typical for uh, the release window, right? This was at 50 bucks, and it slowly came all the way down. A bunch of people bought right here at 30, and it looks like it might be rebounding. And this is what's going to be interesting because this this traditionally happens. We saw this with Twilight; like prices come down, but will they come back up? So that is interesting. We do see on here uh, we have a recent sale at 35, so that would indicate that this is starting to bounce back up already. I would assume the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle are going to be popular cards that people are going to want. They pair with that Charmander from Obsidian, the promo. So, very interesting to see what happens. It's kind of impossible to know. Like, 
seriously, Twilight shook the market. And we we just don't know exactly what's going to happen with these. Super adorable. Love this card. Um, this is one of the ones we pulled. Um, I believe it's over here somewhere on my desk. Where did it go? Here it is. Not that you guys can see this very well, but got the Bulba here. So the Bulbasaur. Yeah, so starting to rebound possibly, which looks interesting. Same with the Briar. You can see this This might be a little re bit of a recurring theme. Uh, we did pull this one as well. This is our SIR that we pulled. But 48 down to start. It got a lot of sales at 30, 27, 27. So it looks like could be bouncing off that a little bit. Because once again, see a sale price at 33. So could start to be on the upswing. Could be interesting. The gold Terrapagos looks like it's kind of still on its way down. Um, 40 down to 24 with recent sale at 23 and 22. So uh, the Gold Tropicos looks like it's probably on its way down. The Dash Bun. Now, this I, I don't particularly care for this Pokemon too much. Uh, but it's growing on me. It's growing on me. I We've seen this before heavily featured in like some other sets, right? But I absolutely love everything that's going on in this card artwork-wise. The Dash Bun is adorable. Um... I, one of my favorite shows to watch is the Great British Baking Show, Bake Off. <laughs> Maybe that's why. I don't know. But I think, yeah, the, anyways, it's just doing it for me. I really like everything that's going on with this card. This is going to, uh, a card that I'm going to be picking up. We're going to wait and see where this card cools off at. But it did it drop down to 23 and it's bouncing up a little bit. We'll take a look at the most recent sales. So it's kind of, seems like it's, dropping maybe a tiny bit more down into the 22s but in the 20 dollar range this is an sir that i'm gonna pick up because you got to think about it this way too guys let's come back here to look at the pull rates right any specific sir 540 packs right now you guys can do the math it's not that hard but we'll just say even if it was just 500 packs Booster packs are like four bucks, uh, you know, MSRP ish, right? So you're looking at two grand worth of packs to pull this card. I'll just buy it at 20. You see, this is often my approach for a lot of singles, but yeah, so this, this card seems affordable. Um, yeah, I have to have this card in my collection. Uh, I might, I might pick it up in Japanese as well, just because I really like it. I don't know. But, um, yeah, super cool card, honestly, um, just from a collection artwork standpoint. Um, the playability, once again, I, I'm not super into... I haven't really started playing the TCG. It's something that I want to do, but currently I'm just not able to. But, yeah. So I, everything I'm looking at from a collecting standpoint, collecting or investing, um, we pulled this one, too. This is our gold card, the Area Zero. Um see in this decline it was in the 40s now it's down into 20 which was a big tank should have sold this the day i pulled it <laughs> but uh that's okay we're just going to keep them all for our collection but uh we did see a little bounce back here bouncing back up down into the 20 and then somebody bought four copies at like 23 so uh might be leveling out for now we'll see we got the lacy uh sir which this got sleeping guy over here this is a very there's a lot of um, a lot of stuff going on in, on here. This card uh, probably not one of my favorite uh, SIRs, but you can see it was at we had a sale at a hundred over a hundred a few sales. Got a lot of sales at 62, then it went to 52. So it looks like it might be bottoming out. We'll check the recent sales. So 51, 53. So. It may be bottoming out around $50, but this is kind of why traditionally you don't buy at, like, at launch. Because if you bought it, well, especially if you bought it at 100 now you've already, you've already lost a lot of money there. You could have bought two copies. But, you know, it's it, it happens. People want their cards early. So, yeah, the Lacey, um, common, common thing there. The Hydrapple, okay, this is another card. This is a SIR. The card that grew on me. I didn't. I didn't like the Pokemon, like really at all. Especially just like the Applin. It, I just. I didn't like it. It. 
it just seems silly. But I don't know if it's this card or just seeing seeing the the Pokemon more. I it is silly. I I have to admit, but it, it's starting to grow on me. And this is another this is another SIR that you know people were bought for fifty, people bought for fifty five, people bought for forty seven, people bought for forty two, people bought for forty one. This is a card that I'm gonna see if this falls in. The, we got in the 30s here, right? Um, once again, I don't want to. I don't want to open 500 packs to maybe pull this card. So this one might be. If Stellar Crown ends up being cheap like this, might be, might be great. Might be easy to master set. Good for collectors. Good for players. And you know we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. The Squirtle. Has a little bit of a different chart, as you guys can see. Super adorable card, by the way. Splashing the Pidgey. But it went for 48, and then went down to 45, and it went back up to 48. And now it's back down around 41. And it looks like it might be kind of leveling off, bouncing off that price. And, I mean, you can see some higher sales here. We got 46, 44. So if the Squirtle... The Squirtle and the Bulbasaur are very interesting. I look at them a lot like the Eevee from Twilight, although the pull rates are easier. So there's going to be more of them out there. So the prices will probably be lower, but we'll see. All will be seen. Is wait to be... All will... All is wait to... I can't talk right now. We'll have to wait to see. The, the Galvantula. Now, this is another card. Another Pokemon that I was like, eh. Not super eh, but I just was like, oh, I mean, he was kind of cute, right? But uh, the Rainbow Borders really grew on me. I really think that they're stunning looking. I like the design. Um, yeah, this one came out the gate around 50. Got a lot of sales at 38, a lot of sales at 37, and then 36. So 37, 34, 32. So yeah, um, it kind of looks like this is maybe on the decline or par possibly leveling out again. Once again, my general advice would be to not buy at pre-release or in the pre or in the release window. Sorry, but there's always exceptions, and Twilight kind of changed that, so it, it is weird. We don't know what's going to happen, but with the pull rates being easier, I'd probably hold off on most of these. Unfortunately, the Terrapagos, you can see, is very interesting right here. 150. And then I don't, this is just like a, I'm just going to call this a glitch. I'm just going to say it kept going. Um, one, it's down to 126. I had the most sales right here at 128, which was how many sales? 63 sales. So that's interesting. And it got cheaper and doesn't have as many sales. So yeah, um, we've seen sales lower right here. We see 115, 115, 120. Um, but yeah, 127, 128. So this will be another one of those cards that I find very interesting. I don't have, I didn't pull this one, um, but this is one one of the ones that I have to have. I think the more I, the more I kind of look at this set, the more I've opened some of it now. Um, I'm holding the cards here in my hand, just kind of looking at them. I like this set. I don't think it's going to be amazing, but I think it's going to be decent, and. I think it has enough. I think it has enough to do well. And I don't know, this might be, this might end up being another set that I master set. If, if the prices of these singles continue to drop, if it doesn't do a Twilight, you know, because Twilight came down and it just, on, not on all the cards, but on like the Greninja and stuff, you know, the prices came down and then they came up and then they shot up later. So it was kind of, it was kind of uh, more of an anomaly, but yeah, just with these cards, I think I don't think it's gonna do the Twilight thing, honestly. Uh, I think it would, it might have uh, if the pull rates, if it was a bigger set, because the pull rates are like the same, right? But the set quantity for the specific cards kind of affecting it. So I do think that it's going to that these will continue to drop. I don't know how far it'll be interesting because there is a lot of strength and collectability for the Bulbasaur and Squirtle. I could see those holding a lot steadier and some of the other cards like the newer ones like the Terrapagos, the Dashbone, the Hydrapple. I could see those, you know, kind of continuing to decline. And that would be, once again, for me, 
if I want to master set this, um, if you want to collect this, if you're playing the TCG or you're collecting, you want to master set, whatever, you want these prices on these singles to drop, right? And if you are a investor from an investing standpoint, you want the singles to do good. They don't have to be amazing. You really just want people to open the product because it's just supply and demand. If you're going to sit on some boxes, um, you want the set. The set has to be remotely strong, right? There has to be a chase, which I think the Terrapagos can hold up as the chase. And I think the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle and the Rainbow Borders, I think they'll grow on people. And I think, and it depends how much they've printed this set. You know, if, if, it, if it ever gets reprinted, uh, I can see this being a, a pretty solid set for for investability. Honestly, you don't really need... You don't need... It doesn't have to be a baller set, per se, to be a good set to invest in. So I think that there's enough of a chase. It's not a crazy chase. I think it'll grow on people. And I think the, the other cards, the other IRs, are pretty good. Even, like, the, the Lydian... IR, it's like three bucks right now. I think that's a stunning card, and for me, um, I like Gen 1, Gen 2 is kind of my favorite. I'm going to pick that card up, and I'm glad it's affordable. So, I think there is some investability to be had for Stellar Crown. I think there is definitely collectability, and there's definitely playability. Um, that is my least uh, aspect that I'm least informed on, the playability-wise. I do want to start playing the TCG at my LGS, but... Um, I mean, I, to be honest, I kind of have, uh, social anxiety that I don't know if I can deal with that. Um, something I'm working on and I want to start doing that. I've wanted to start playing the TCG for a while now. Um, I played it, the most I played it was on the Game Boy game back in the day. Um, but yeah, so that, that's something that I want to start working towards, but personally I can't do that right now i can kind of do a card show i don't know it doesn't make sense if you guys know anything about anxiety it doesn't make sense i can film myself here for thousands of people to watch um but it's kind of different because like i'm not you're i'm not seeing you see me if that makes sense so <laughs> i don't know um anyways uh rambling here so stellar crown is it good i think it's good is it great maybe not great but i think it's good I think it's it's a great set, great set for collectors and investors. I think it'll do well in both. We'll have to see how the singles shake out. Um, it is impossible for anybody to tell you. It is impossible to know where these cards will go. It really is. Okay, nobody nobody knows for certain. The market is crazy and weird, and just enjoy, enjoy it. Enjoy opening the product. Enjoy collecting, and <clears throat> enjoy investing. Or if you collect sealed or whatever you do. Um, collect singles, collect sealed, invest sealed, invest in singles. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. It's fun to get new cards. And that is going to do it for this one, guys. Just another little Stellar Crown update. I will catch you in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.